Greetings everyone and welcome to this Wayward Art Company tutorial on animation. My name is Michael McCann and in this video we're just going to be going over the basics of this character's walk cycle. You can download this blend file from a link in the description below. Once you have it you'll notice that the character already has this animation applied to it, so if you want to follow along with the tutorial you'll first need to delete these keyframes. Now we're going to start by just blocking out the basic parts of the animation and then filling in more detail as we go. So if I select the armature and then choose pose mode, uh, the first thing that I want to do is take a look at the hip bones. And you'll notice that there are two facing opposite directions from each other. One will control the rotation of the hip, and the other one will affect the hip's position or the central part of the dinosaur's body. So let's make our dinosaur character take his first step. With this hip bone selected, I'll just lower the position of those hips. And you'll notice that when I do this, the arms don't really follow along. And while they are parented to the rest of the armature, the IKs prevent the hands from going any lower. Now if you don't know what an IK is, it stands for inverse kinematics, and it allows you to use one bone to control multiple bones. So I'll select both of the arm IK bones, and I'll just pull them down so that they look like they're resting in this position. And by the way, after selecting these bones, I'm using the G key to reposition them. So I'll do the same for the left leg IK. I'll just pull this back. And the right leg IK, I'll push this one forward. Now we have a good start for the first frame of our animation. So let's lock in the keyframes for all of these bones. If I double tap A to select all of the bones in the armature, then I can type I and choose location and rotation. And you can see below where it's added a keyframe to each individual bone. Because we want this animation to loop, we need the first frame and the last frame to be identical. So with all of those keyframes selected, I'm going to go to key and then choose copy keyframes. Now I'll set the timeline up to frame 20, go back to key, and then choose paste keyframes. Now these orange bars means that nothing has changed between those two points in the timeline. So let's go to frame 10, go back to key, and choose paste flipped. And now you can see that the animation at frame 10 has reversed, so now that the left leg is forward and the right leg is back. If I just scroll through the timeline, you can see that we have the, the very basics of the walk cycle, but it just kind of looks like he's skiing. And you'll notice if I end this timeline at frame 20 uh, and play the animation, uh, it's moving a, a bit fast, so you can't really tell what's happening. But because the first and last keyframes are the same, it's technically playing that frame twice. So we're actually going to end it at frame 19. And now we have a nice smooth continuous loop. But we need to start adding in some of the details to make it look like he's actually walking. For instance, at frame 0, his left leg is back, and at frame 10, his left leg is forward. So somewhere in the middle, at frame 5, his left leg would be up, and all of his weight would be resting on his right foot. To do that, we first need to reselect that hip bone and pull him up so that his legs are almost straight. Actually, I'll control Z to undo that, and I'll select the arm IKs along with the hip bone, and now just pull it up so that everything moves up together. And now with just those three bones selected, I'll type I and choose location. Then I can select the left leg IK and move it up so that his foot's off of the ground. And again, type I and choose location for that as well. And next, I'll select the toe bone and I'll rotate that with the R key, and then type I and choose rotation. Now initially we set the location and the rotation of all of the bones for the first set of keyframes, uh, but after that you only need to do one or the other depending on if you're rotating or moving a bone. Next let's go to frame 15 and select those arm IKs and the hip bone, and do just as we did before, we'll make them stand straight up, then type I and set the location of those bones. Now I'll select the right leg IK and move it up. And again, I and location. And now select the toes and rotate those down. And then type I and set the rotation. All right, so if we play the animation, 
We can see the legs look a little more natural. He's no longer just shuffling or dragging his feet. And so the next step would be to move to a different part of the body. And I'm kind of, the thing that stands out to me the most is the arms. So the arms are just very still as he's moving up and down. And I want to give them some kind of movement. And with characters that walk on two legs, so typically that would be like we're talking about like human beings. Um, if the left foot was forward, then the right arm would swing back. Uh, so, but that's not necessarily the case here because these arms are more forward facing. I could imagine they actually would more likely bounce up and down. And because this is a cartoon style character, you can even exaggerate these movements a little more than if, say, it were like a realistic character. So at frame 5, I'm going to select both of the arm IKs, move them up, and then set the location. Now having only those two bones selected means only those keyframes are selected. So I can use Shift D to duplicate them and then move them to frame 15. And now I have this very natural bouncing motion with his arms. And so I'll probably come back to the arms, but right now I want to move along to the neck because I think the head's bobbing up and down a bit too much. And rather than have it going up and down, I think I'll have him move it back and forth. So I'll select the neck bone and then rotate it back slightly. And we can see that we already have keyframes because we initially set the keyframes for the entire armature, but we don't need these. So I can just type X and delete them and then type I and select rotation. Now with those keyframes selected at frame 0, I'm going to use Shift to D to duplicate them and move them to frame 10 and then again to frame 20. Now at frame 5, he's standing much taller, so I'm going to select the bone just below the neck, which is spine 2. And I'm going to rotate it down so that his head is roughly in the same position as before. We'll also select the bone just under the head, which is neck 001, and we'll rotate this back so that he's looking straight. And if I hold shift, I can select both of those bones and then type I and choose rotation. Now again, I'll just use shift D to copy those and move them to frame 15. Okay, so I think this looks like an improvement. His head sort of extending outward rather than bobbing up and down, similar to a way a bird walks. And so what I want to do now is I want to add some other elements to the animation that don't look like it's part of the looped animation. And so with all of the bones selected in the viewport, I can hold shift and select all of the keys at frames 5, 10, 15, and 20, and then use shift D to duplicate them and move them so that they're evenly spaced apart along the timeline. Then I can use shift R to repeat that process until the final frame ends at frame 120. Also, I need to make sure that the animation ends now at frame 119, because remember the first and last frame are exactly the same. All right, so the next thing I'm going to work on is the tail because it's currently not doing anything. And most of the bones in the tail have bone constraints applied to them. So let's just select the two that do not. So the two that are not green. And we'll delete all of the keyframes uh, that are in the timeline for just those two bones. But at frame zero, we will reset just the rotation for those two. And then Shift D to duplicate them and set them to frame 120. And those are the only two bones in the tail that we will be uh, manipulating in pose mode. So at frame 5, I'm going to rotate the tip of the tail down, then type I and choose rotation. At frame 10, I'll take the base of the tail, rotate it up. And then once again, type I and choose rotation. And you can see that the two bones that follow they copy the rotation, so you only need to manipulate the one bone to, to rotate all three. Okay, next at frame 15, I'm going to rotate the tip of the tail back, and then set the rotation there as well. So if I scroll through the timeline, I like so far the, the sort of base structure of how the tail is being animated. Um, so I want to see it loop. If I see it loop, I can see where there are issues. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll select just those two bones and then all of the keyframes at frame 0, 5, 10, and 15 and I'll use Shift D to duplicate them and just move them out so they're evenly spaced and then Shift R to repeat that all the way up to the end of the animation. 
Okay, and I quite like the animation of the tail, but I think it's moving too fast. And so the best way to slow it down is to use the S key, which you probably know in every other area of Blender, it's used to scale. Uh, but it's very important to remember that depending on where you are in the timeline, it will scale from that point. So if I selected all of the keyframes by double tapping A, and say I did this from frame uh, 60, it scales outward. So we want to scale from frame zero, so it scales in one direction. Okay, and because his tail animation consists of four keyed frames at frame zero, frame five, frame 10, and frame 15, that was the original loop for his tail, I'm just going to scale four of those keyed frames past frame 120, and that will assure that this stays a looped animation. And it is moving a bit slower now, so I think this looks better. Uh, we may adjust it even more. Okay, so if I double tap A again, I can deselect all of those keyframes and then use B to box select those ones at the end that I don't need anymore, that are after frame 120, and then just delete them. Now to keep this from looking like too much of a, uh, like a loop, I can make some changes. So here at 24, I'm going to rotate the, the tail down just slightly and then set the uh, rotation. And now I'll come up to say frame 72 and I'll do the same. So now that's not a very consistent change through the loop. It's just happening occasionally he will drop his tail further. And I think that the tail is actually still moving a bit too fast for my liking, so I might try to slow that down a bit more. So I'll just select those two bones that have keyframes uh, applied to them, and at frame zero, I'll scale them up until four of those sets of keyframes are past the uh, 120 in the timeline. And okay, I think I like this better. Now I can just delete these keyframes after frame 120. And now move on to the, the neck and the head because I wanna create some random animation uh, for him sort of looking around as he's walking. And I'm going to do this by rotating the spine one bone. Uh, that way he'll tilt his shoulders as he's moving his head. So I'm going to delete all of the keyframes associated with that bone. And that gives us a clean slate. And if I press play on the animation, with this bone selected, if I double tap R, that activates this sort of multi-directional rotation tool. So now I can just manipulate this bone around and sort of get a feel for what I want him to do with his head. So now I'll come down to this little, what looks like a record button. This is for setting automatic keyframes. And then I'll press play. And now as he's walking, I'm just going to again, double tap R. And that set some interesting keyframes. You can see it, it added quite a few, uh, but that's okay because this is the only boom we're going to do this for. And because I clicked out of that rotation setting, uh, it ended, it sort of snapped back into the original position. So this last keyframe needs to be, again, back at frame 120, so it loops. Okay, and so now he randomly looks around, which really helps break the, the repetition of that walk cycle. And I said earlier that I was going to come back to the arms. And now's a good time because as I rotated that uh, spine bone to move his head, again, his shoulders rotated around as well. And now are, there are these uh, frames where his arms are up a bit too high. So as this shoulder is rotated down, I'm going to move his arm down along with it. And so basically now I'll just be scrolling through the keyframes uh, and then typing I and changing the location with the arm IKs. So here this keyframe looks a little weird, so I'll move his arm out here, maybe in towards the center as well.
and then just continue through the timeline. Now in this instance, I'm only going to be um, making adjustments to the left arm because that's the one that's mostly visible uh, in the camera view. Uh, but you could certainly do the same for the other arm IK as well. And I think that we're pretty close to wrapping up the animation now. I think that we have the, the basic parts of it done. Uh, but one thing we do need to do is uh, to parent the camera to the armature. Uh, because we actually want to make this character walk in a scene and the camera has to follow. So in object mode, if I select the camera and then hold shift and select the armature, I can then type P and set the parent to object. Uh, so then with only the armature selected, I'm going to make sure I go back to frame zero and then use I to set the location and then come all the way up to frame 120, and now just grab the armature with the G key, move it forward. Now I'm locking this to the Y axis also. And so now at frame 120, I'll use I again and set the location. And so if I press play, you can see that the character stays within the camera's view, but he is in fact walking across the floor. Now to make this animation one consistent speed, and with the armature selected, I'm going to go to key and then interpolation mode and then choose linear. Now he's walking in one consistent speed rather than starting off slow and then speeding up and then slowing down before it ends. Now while we covered the basics of the walk cycle, uh, there are a lot more things that you could do. So for instance, if I go into pose mode and look at this character from the front orthographic view, if I scroll up, you can see that as he's resting all of his weight on one leg, uh, he's not really supporting his weight. Like he would naturally tip over if he were actually standing this way. So these are some of the important details that, you know, like once you get the basics of an animation done, you go back and you keep refining it and refining it until you get it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the hip bone. I'm going to select both of the arm IKs and also this left leg IK. And I'm just going to shift it over so that it looks like he is in fact resting all of his weight on this side. Then I can type I and set the location for those bones. Okay, and I'll, I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll just uh, select the spine, the arm IKs, now the right leg IK, and I'll use the G key to pull them to the side, type I, and choose location. It's a little interesting how the process is basically the same uh, as you would with modeling, right? Because you start with this very simple shape, you sort of block out the, the, the basic shape of something and then you slowly add more details. Uh, so animation is basically the same. It's a really fun process and I, I, I really love it. I don't, I, don't, I don't do it enough, but I really love animating. If you're interested in how I created the material for this character uh, and the final scene, uh, you can check out the video below. It's on the add-on called Fade and it'll cover the entire process of making this scene. I'll also leave a link to the Blender Market page where you can learn more about Fade and all of its features. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I will be doing more like this in the future, so I'll see you in the next one.